Hi, this is Terry. Welcome back to my channel. I'm recording this on Monday to be released on Tuesday. And uh, we have a quick break while I'm waiting for eight pounds of sliced onions to cook up for our dinner, which is a French onion soup. The recipe provided by uh, my friend Mila, who lives up in Canada. So Ray's not thrilled because Ray doesn't love French onion soup, but we're gonna be pairing it up with a frisée salad with poached eggs and a lardon. So hopefully um, there will be enough there. Ooh, and I saw a recipe for uh, basically a, a blistered tomato garlic ricotta cheese uh, topping for on top of um, some sliced and toasted baguette. So. Um, so right in the middle, we're doing this recording, and uh, since it's after four, in fact, it's after six, and uh, cheers. So since this, um, we are rapidly approaching my birthday month, which is a little bit of a letdown, as I talked about on Saturday. Um, and my poor mom, mom, you'll be watching this one, you haven't watched Saturdays yet, but she was pretty sad that she is not able to be the mom or the grandma that, that she wants to be right now because she can't go out and shop and get cards and goodies for Easter or for anything else. And um, I really feel for her and I sent her a little special goodie so hopefully she gets it later on this week. Because uh, you know what? It's her birthday for two of us uh, since uh, me and my identical twin sister were both born on April 5th. And with celebration month, I know right now it's pretty challenging <laughs> on so many levels. This is day 14, right? Either 14 or 15. Either way, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. And um, I feel incredibly blessed that Sophie, Adam's girlfriend, is staying with us because she helps to add a dynamic that is new. I, f I think about people having to live alone or living just with one other person and uh, not having um, really as much of a dynamic household as we have. Um, and I say dynamic in the most positive of, way of ways because uh, there's, just, there's just a lot going on. I had 20 minutes alone in the house today. Uh, Zeke and Ray were off doing something. Sophie was at her job babysitting and Adam ran to go get some cash. And uh, yes, he washed his hands a lot afterwards. Um, and I was in the house for the first time in, I think nearly three weeks um, by myself. And it, uh, it was weird, but it felt really, really good. Um, so in terms of coming back to celebration, um, I'd already decided that April for the April challenge. Now, if you remember, January was Bye Bye Baggage. February was One Brave Thing. Uh, March has been firsts after 40 and April is going to be toast the winds and the reason why I'm doing this is with all that's going on and all that we're experiencing we can still celebrate find time to celebrate find time to raise a glass raise a glass to uh, to toast um, something good that's happening something good that we experienced or something good that we did and so my challenge to all of you and then anybody who follows me on Instagram, link in the description. How was that, Ray? I didn't have to be prompted. Um, um, just to celebrate some sort of win. Uh, every day in my Priori Planner, this one, where is it? I just started a new one um, in here. I write down uh, three wins. So in the morning, I write my three gratitudes, and then in the evening or throughout the day, I write at least three wins. Sometimes it's more than that. And so I challenge all of you to find something to celebrate. And if you don't know or you need some prompting, then just go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Terry Hansen Mead. Once again, linked in the description, but I also push it out on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Um, and so that you can just uh, be prompted to think about ways to celebrate the goodness in our lives at a time when there's a lot of negative stuff going out. And this, and once again, I think I've said this every single time. If you're feeling cruddy, if you're crying, angry, if you're grieving, um, I mean, a lot of people had, a lot of us had plans, a lot of us had expectations, and. A lot of us are having to, most of us are having to let go of what we thought would be in order to adapt to what it is right now. And that's, 
acknowledging that is a win in and of itself. And um, so a lot of us are doing some very new things and have some very new behaviors. And I'm trying to remain optimistic and hopeful because I'm just that Pollyanna-esque. And I also want to continue to plant seeds of goodness out into the world. Uh, the, uh, you know, uh, some of the other good stuff, Ray and I did yoga together. And uh, how was that this morning, Ray? Super fun. It's super fun. What was even more fun was uh, our friend and neighbor, Jessica Campbell. With, Link in description. Absolutely. With Food Foundation has been doing this chakra series. And so uh, today was the yellow, which was um, the, fiery core. the fiery core. So we did some ab work and the 20 minutes because I was with Ray doing it. And then also because it was my friend, Jessica, it went just like that. And I've done her orange and I've also done her, what was it? Was the first one red? Uh, the red was grounding and the orange was creativity and the yellow was fire in the belly. And she's working on the green chakra where I think she's doing yoga with her kids and I think they've had to re-record it at least once or twice. So I'm really looking forward to it and I have no idea what the green chakra is. Um, I've also been doing my friend Lily Kate Keaton, also link in the description. It has a Pilates studio in Half Moon Bay, California. Obviously they're not able to conduct their lessons. So she's been putting out some videos of some things that we can do. So a little bit later, I may actually do her leg, uh, workout that I think she put, put out today, but I love that I'm getting to take like these little exercise classes from instructors that I absolutely love and the people that I love. And I feel like I'm brought into their studios and I'm brought into their homes and I'm brought into their lives. Um, and I think I've mentioned it before, Mandy Bateman with Lub Dub, um, her business has gone through the roof because she's providing a platform for instructors to be able to provide this service, you know, pretty much globally. Link so, in description. Yes. Um, and I've been encouraging people to do that. Speaking of which, Ray got to participate in my friend Christy Nichols um, uh, workshop for teens. Um, mm -hmm. What did you think of that, Ray? Oh, it was super fun. We got to do a bit of personal um, exploring and some uh, like work with how we interact with others and how we can form a like successful community and all the roles everyone plays in that. And I found that very fascinating. Um, I did that with Sophia. And... Did you get to know Sophia better through that too? Yeah. It was, it was a very good experience. Uh, we did it over the week, mm -hmm. but she's planning on extending it to, um, rather than like four less, not lessons, sessions in um, one week, all crammed into the week. Mm -hmm. She's spreading it out over four weeks um, with two sessions a week, I believe. Yeah, and um, as she rolls that out, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description. Um, it is for teenagers, what do you decide, 13 or 15 on up to like 22? Um, yeah, probably closer to 15 to like 22, 24-ish. Yeah, so um, might be a good opportunity if you have kids at home and they're struggling with um, all sorts of stuff right now. And if you are heading into week three of uh, sheltering in place like we are, you may be exploring ways to help their sanity and then also help yours. And so Christy is offering these virtual retreats for a really reasonable price. Um, and uh, she, unfortunately, we can't go to Nicaragua for it, but she can bring Nicaragua into, uh, into your home. So I think that's uh, pretty, pretty exciting too, how technology is... Um, providing opportunities to get access to things that we wouldn't normally get access to. Speaking of which, on Saturday, I was on a panel. Um, the, it was a digital conference for Fashion 360 Network. I talked about the future of networking with a couple of other panelists. And one of the questions that one of the audience members, and they were able to do it through the chat, which I'm getting really good at, which is being on Zoom or um, one of the Skype or one of the other uh, uh, video conference platforms and then being able to participate and at the same time do chat at the same time. It's awesome. It's multidimensional. I think it's super fun. Um, but one of the people asked about 
you know, why are investors all of a sudden interested in companies like Zoom or Calm, which is for meditation, or some of these other platforms? Why wouldn't they be? Well, well, here's the thing. is It's not that they're all of a sudden interested. They have been interested for a while. The technologies have become mainstream in ways that people, like, like some of us have been using this stuff for, for a number of years, but it hasn't gone mainstream. And overnight, uh, somebody pointed out that the term Zoom uh, became a verb. So, you know, like Xerox became, uh, it's a copy and it's something that you do to copy. Zoom is something that you do in terms of a video conference and let's get on a Zoom or let's do a Zoom call. Um, it's now synonymous with um, basically, you know, video conferencing or video calls. And it's not that they're all of a sudden interesting um, types of companies for investors. Some people who were not previously familiar with these kinds of things are now getting familiar with something. And so it appears to be brand new, but these things have been out for a long time. And that's what's absolutely fascinating about the use of technology in a time when um, people are having to rely on technology in ways that they never had to before. And it's been, I think, a steep learning curve for a lot of people, especially if you have kids and all of a sudden you're having to do distance learning, homeschooling, uh, you know, Zoom classes. Um, I think it's, it's as tough on the parents as it is on the kids in order to adjust into these new behaviors. In fact, my mom, I think, just figured out Zoom the other day and she called me and I'm like, why don't we just jump on a Zoom or we could Skype or FaceTime. And she's like, oh, I have a class tonight, I'm busy. And I'm like, okay, fine. But sometime this week, let's try to do that so we can see each other face to face. Um, and I'm super encouraging of that kind of thing. And I'm encouraging of like virtual happy hours or virtual coffees. Uh, yesterday morning, I got on the, on a, I think I use Zoom, although I'm trying to find another platform so I can support another company. Um, with my friend Amen, who is in Paris. And so we talked for almost two hours. Uh, it was late afternoon her time, it was early morning my time, and it was really lovely to connect. And she and I have pretty much only emailed, um, or we've sent snail mail back and forth, um, or we Facebook messaged, uh, but this was the first time in a long time we've seen each other face to face. And it, you know, to be honest, it was lovely to be able to connect. And she's doing amazing things. So to tie into what I talked about about a week and a half ago, which is where women are stepping in and innovating and filling gaps, um, Imen is working with a couple of other people to launch a charity to help the people in Algeria who are struggling with getting access to good information, um, healthcare supplies, uh, general medical supplies. And so I put her in touch with uh, the founder and CEO of one of my portfolio companies via Global Health out of Seattle because they have a platform that acts as the middleman for um, uh, local distributors in African countries with um, health uh, medical supply, whether it's from gloves to medical devices. Um, uh, manufacturers throughout the world in order to provide easy, uh, easy access, distribution, etc., um, and take into account the local import rules. So um, they're not in Algeria, and I'm kind of like, well, maybe this could be an opportunity to uh, get into Algeria. So I saw it as a win-win. Amen is trying to work with people to help the local people, and um, Noah, who's the CEO founder, has a business that actually does um, provide some of those can, it does have a platform that could potentially satisfy some of the needs for the uh, for the for the local people who apparently are really really struggling, which reminds me of one more thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, this this time has really forced me to focus on priorities, and I don't know if this is happening for you, if you are having to really streamline what you are interested in doing, willing to do, or even capable of doing my ability to execute is down drastically. I, I still am probably um, doing more than your average bear, but um, it's still frustrating that I can't do, uh, just because I'm tired, um, I just can't do all that I want to do. So I was talking to my husband Zeke last night about um, you know, the things that I've been thinking about doing and wanting to do, and uh, you know, I've, I've scaled stuff back. I, 
I was talking about relaunching my podcast and I've decided that no, I'm just going to continue with this YouTube uh, platform, try to get better at it, try to get broader distribution and then get my messaging around this, specifically around planting seeds to help women claim our power and change the world. Um, I'm considering a digital conference for September and that, I'm, you know, if it comes together, great, but I'm not going to stress myself out trying to make that happen. Um, I've decided to stop promoting my book, Piloting Your Life, a link in the description, to the extent that I have been um, so that I can focus on generating revenue in my consulting business and also I'm starting to noodle over what my next book is going to be, which I think is around helping women claim our power. Um, so it, you know, it's also making sure that the kids are good, that we are well fed, that um, I'm doing things that I enjoy. I stopped today to do a puzzle for a couple of hours and I watched Frozen 2, which I didn't love, but um, I still watched it. And then I started watching Toy Story 4 again. What, Ray? <laughs> oh, no. <coughs> you just didn't particularly love Frozen 2. Um, no. I saw it several months ago when it was still in theaters. I thought it was cute. I just, predictable, it was, but cute. It, yeah. No, I don't know what I was expecting. And, and maybe right now, you know, I'm reading a book right now, which I'm not loving. And I just read a book, The Man Called Ove, which I didn't love. And so maybe it's just where I'm at right now. And um, I'm struggling to like anything. But you know what I am loving? Oh, is the flowers. These are all from my garden. I am loving these right now. I have irises and tulips and freesias. The crocuses kind of came and went. Um, it, I'm just, I'm absolutely loving those. So maybe I'm not being super negative and nitpicky, but um, my entertainment, apparently I'm looking for a little bit more. Although, you know what? I'm listening to Where the Crawdads Sing, mm -hmm. and I'm really enjoying this book. Um, and I, I'm listening to a couple podcasts, like a... A strong sense of place which I'm absolutely loving so I guess things are just kind of hitting or they're completely missing but um, anyway so coming back to priorities so um, maybe this is something that you're already thinking about and if not I highly recommend is thinking about what's the most important thing in your life or what are the most important things who are the most important people I thought um, you were going to say who are the most important things. I was going to, to but I was like, it. no, you were you were going to correct me on that. So I wasn't going to put that Preemptive out there. Preemptive correction. Preemptive. It's just like, yeah, I have Ray over here. So um, focus on who and what's most important. Um, think about ways to make sure that we can reduce our stress, uh, increase our joy, and look for ways to focus on the positive and uh, celebrate those wins. So starting on uh, starting on April 1st, so when this comes out on Tuesday, it'll be tomorrow. Um, but the intro one, oh, I'm so excited about the infographics. Um, my bestie Jacqueline has outdone herself with the graphics. They're so pretty. And you might wanna just go out and take a look just to, just to be able to see some pretty goodness out in the world. So, Ray, anything else? We're chilling. How are you doing, are you good? I'm honestly doing real well. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're doing, we're doing fine. So we're I doing. think, I think the onions are calling my name and I've got some, uh, lardone and frisee and eggs and tomatoes and all sorts of vegetarian, well, the lardone's not vegetarian, but it's mostly nice. vegetarian. It's Monday. So we're doing a vegetarian night. Shh, don't tell Adam cause he gets kind of annoyed at those, but, um, there's, you know, one day this week we'll have a steak. So, um, and with that, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you have a chance, go ahead and click on that little bell so you'll get notified when the um, videos come out. Apparently my mother hasn't figured that one out because she's only getting the Tuesday notifications. So mom, click the, click the little bell button. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, love you, Nana. Yeah, we love you, Nana. Um, and I think that's it. So take some risks, not health, not risks. health risks. Um, let go of perfection. <laughs> Took you a moment there. I'm like, I got it. I don't have to read it anymore. And above all else, have some fun and wash your hands. Oh my goodness. And wash your hands.